Well, James Across works for Open Works Engineering, which provides counter drone systems for civil authorities. He talked me through what's likely to be happening behind the scenes as authorities work to resolve the situation. It's a really challenging situation that the organisation down at Gatwick are, are facing, you know, both Gatwick Airport and the law enforcement officers down there. So, you know, a drone threat like this is a, is a very challenging threat to, to defeat for any security organisation. Uh, you know, we're working with groups around the world, supplying law enforcement and, and military with counter drone technology to exactly to defeat this kind of threat. But, but really, a, a lot of uh, airports, you know, even prisons, critical national infrastructure, do not currently have the, the technology and the techniques in place to counter such a, such a serious threat as what we've seen at Gatwick. But James, the drone operator is still at large here. Why is it proving so difficult to trace the person or the people behind this? Well, th this particular situation is, is really quite special. So a lot of people are familiar with consumer drones now and they can fly you know, a kilometre away from where you are, despite regulations, of course, that, that don't stop the bad actors. So that's consumer drones. But what we're hearing in the, in the press, and, and I'm not privy to any information outside of what we're, what we're hearing in the press, uh, what we're hearing is that the, the drone that was used was not your typical consumer drone. It was a higher grade device, more of an industrial capability. And um, so a larger drone can fly longer distances with greater flight duration. So, you know, the, the operators of this drone could be as much as five or seven kilometers away from where the drone itself is. So you can imagine the size of area that the, that the law enforcement groups then have to try and, and cover when finding the operator. And of course, this drone's flying completely autonomously uh, or certainly can be. And, um, and there's indicators of that. And, and then when it's flying autonomously, there's no radio link between the drone and the pilot. So, you know, signal um, intelligence can't be used to identify and, and locate the pilot either. And James, this incident inevitably raises so many questions about security, particularly around airports. What steps do you think need to be taken to stop this kind of thing happening again? We should acknowledge that both government authorities uh, and operators such as airports and, and prisons have been looking into this technology for some time now. Uh, there's government working groups, there's European working groups really looking at this threat and, and what can be taken, what actions can be taken to mitigate the threat. Um, of course, so far, all we've really seen is, is um, you know, small scale incidents, small scale disruption and near misses. Now, of course, this, this particular uh, incident really highlights um, what can go wrong, what the impact can be. So I think what we'll see is both at a government level and at a, at a you know, commercial airport operational level, we'll see a lot more action um, and a lot more focused action uh, and looking at, at getting counter drone systems and procedures in place. Do you think the law needs to be changed to deter people more? It's a good point to raise, uh, and the law is being changed in many places. Um, different drone re operator regulations are being put in place. But of course, uh, the, you know, the operators of the drone that's dis disrupted Gatwick, you know, they're not interested in regulations, rules, the law. They're not interested in, in registering their drones. So really, that, that won't prevent this kind of incident. And that's why you really need effective countermeasures in place for that.